This video is a support on how to find the y-intercept of a line. And I think the piece that makes algebra a little bit tricky for some students is that I can ask you for the y-intercept, but it really depends on what information you're given, whether it's a graph or an equation or a table, and then being able to figure out what tools do you need in order to find the y-intercept. So first up, a y-intercept is um, the place where the graph uh, crosses the y-axis. Okay, um, So there's a couple ways. These are just uh, four ways just highlighted in this uh, graphic organizer. So first off is thinking about what you're given. So if you're given a graph, what you're going to do is you're going to look for the place where the line crosses the y-axis. So here's a graph. Here's the y-axis. Let me find the highlighter. So here's the y-axis and the place where the line crosses it right there. Okay, So it is the point 0, 2, or sometimes we'll just say that the y-intercept is 2. Okay, and the in um, the United States, the variable that we use for y-intercept is b. I know that is different in other parts of the world, having taught elsewhere. Okay, and then in the second problem, uh, what we're given here is we're given an equation, and we're given it given an equation in the slope-intercept form or as many people know, in the y equals mx plus b form, where b is your y-intercept. So looking at this, y equals mx plus b, uh, once again, a subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So here is my y-intercept, which is negative 1. Now, you can also be given a table. Now, you'll be lucky if the table has x equals 0 because um, what defines where the line crosses the y-axis is the place where x is equal to 0. So in this case, here is our x, there's our y. So I can look at my, I can look at my table, and if I have an x equals 0, then that y value will be my y-intercept. So for this first one, the y-intercept is negative 1. So here's my second example. Given a table here, and I'm like, any x is equal to 0? No, there aren't. So now this is going to be probably one of the, the more lo like longer ones that you're going to need to work on. So, so I'm going to kind of put this up here. Okay, so... Um, what we're going to do is we are going to first find the slope. And then basically using the slope, so we're going to find the slope. So slope is the change in y over the change in x. So I can look down here and I could be saying my change in y went from 7 to negative 1. That is a change of 8. So I'm having to go back and forward on this one. And my change in x's was negative 2 to positive 2. That is a change in 4. Okay. And once again, on the other video, I'm going to show you the long way of how to write that, that out using a formula. But this is assuming you've done some slope work before. Simplifying that becomes a slope of 2. So I found the slope. So if I'm thinking about my equation and I want to write the y-intercept, I could think about like, okay, well, I could try to put it in here, and I know my slope. My slope is 2, and I'm looking for my y-intercept. I'm looking for that piece there, but I don't have that, but I have this x and y. Well, what are x and y? x and y is any point on my table, so I can substitute in a point into this equation. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to look at my table and I'm going to see, okay, it doesn't matter which point I'm going to do, I'm going to do this 2, negative 1 just because it, it, you know, smaller numbers. So my x is 2, 
So I'm going to put this in here, 2 times 2. My y is negative 1, so I'm going to stick that into the y. And this is the tricky part where people kind of flip those around, so be really careful where you substitute the values in, plus b. And then solving this, I get negative 1 equals 4 plus b. 4 plus what gives me negative 1? Or you could do it the opposite way where you could just subtract it out and show all that work. So b is equal to negative 5. Okay, so there's my negative 5 down here for this one. Now, the last one is you can be given an equation in any form wanting to find the y-intercept. We're going back to, you could graph this out. That's one option. You could put this in y equals mx plus b form, so using a little bit of algebraic manipulation, subtracting 2x from both sides, and then dividing by 4 across everything. But an easy way to do it is you can set, go back to your definition here, set x equals to 0, and that will give us our y-intercept. So if I set x equal to 0, and I can even do it with this cover-up method, so if x is 0, then 4y is equal to 12, so y must be equal to 3. So the y-intercept is 3 for this problem. Okay, so that's a little intro to y-intercept. Might be worthwhile watching this video more than once and definitely filling in a table.